Welcome back. It's Easter, which means it's time for hunting Easter eggs, or rather, features that you might not know about yet. Here's a quick tour of more than a dozen fusion secrets in no particular order. Using these buttons you can go to the next or previous frame. That's obvious. But did you know that you can right-click here and select a different step size? Now you can jump to every tenth frame, for example. The proxy button also has a context menu, which allows you to select the reduced resolution for proxy mode. 2 means half the size, 3 means a third. If proxy mode is enabled, every loader will use the files from its proxy clip input, if you have selected one. This clip can have any resolution, it doesn't have to match the proxy scale you have chosen. You can use the context menu to select all upstream tools and quickly move around a whole branch. Fusion has a couple of helpful hotkeys when dealing with Bezier splines. If you have selected a couple of points, hold down one of these keys and drag your mouse. S to scale the vertices, X or Y to only scale in one direction, T to twist the vertices around the mouse position, and using O you can offset a double-edged polygon from its inner spline. Here's another secret polygon hotkey. If you hold down M while moving the center, the spline itself will stay in place. Use the page up and page down keys to jump from one point to the next. Oh, and, and did you know that you can tag polygon points with numbers? This makes it really easy to follow their position in complicated rotors. The hotkey is Shift T and it will only affect the selected vertices. One more for Roto. Shift B will give you this nice shape box. Dragging a corner will resize the box. If you hold down Ctrl, resizing happens around the center and if you hold down Shift, you can distort the box like a corner pin. Let's stay in the viewer. By default, it will only show the controls of tools you have selected. But you can also pin a control, so it will be shown even if you work on other tools in the meantime. To do this, choose Controls pinned in the context menu. To unpin, go to the same submenu and select None. By the way, pinning controls is also available in 3D viewers. By default, you'll see all the cameras and point clouds, even if the tools are not selected. You can disable that in case you're dealing with lots of camera projections that clutter your scene. You've probably been using the subviews like the waveform monitor. If you press Shift V, you can swap the main view and the sub view. By pressing V once more, the small viewer is hidden and you end up with a nice and large waveform monitor, for example, or any other sub view. If you ever happen to end up in this mode, where there's a red border around your comp and rendering seems to be broken, check the update button down here. You might have hit the scroll lock key on your keyboard, which stops Fusion from updating its viewers. Speaking of viewers, would you like to use your mouse wheel without holding down the control key to zoom in and out? You can enable this hidden setting by typing this line in the console. Then right click in a viewer and save this as your default behavior. Since this has only affected the left viewer so far, you need to load this new default in the other viewers as well. You also need to load the default viewer settings for old comps. Fusion is its own render manager. If you want to render more than one comp overnight or during lunch break and you can't use the render form, just open the render manager on your local machine. Then queue the comps you want to render and make sure you have the allow network renders option enabled. You can also continue working in Fusion while rendering takes place in the background. You're probably aware that you can right click on the cache status label. But did you know you can also shift right click? This allows you to view some debug reports about your hardware or GPU. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.